I would love to bring up Brigitte Baptiste to talk about the sustainability to stability and our wonderful provocateurs, Adam and, and Klaus. So Brigitte, hello, how are you? I, every time you show up on screen, I am completely taken aback by how fabulous you are. Um, we <laughs> have you seven, have, minutes, seven minutes on the clock, please. Um, so we can all enjoy your fabulousness as well. Rajit, your time starts now. Thank you, Ahmed, and thank you, all of you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I would like to talk uh, a lot, or well, a bit, about uh, the implication of changes that we have imposed to our planet and the need to redefine our ways of living in it if we wish to survive as a species. But mostly I would like to share some views about the need to design in a very short term uh, a fair amount of options to face global warming and the destruction of biodiversity altogether without creating, of course, more inequity and social injustice. To begin, I would like to emphasize a view of the world as a new and emerging global ecosystem a changed world driven by humankind, modified at all levels because of us. Our species is now thriving at global scale thanks to our ingenuity and cultural adaptive capacities, uh, which in turn are all rooted in the diversity of material conditions of the land at each region of the planet and, and perhaps 10, 20,000 years of history. We, we may depict that process as a very painful history, plenty of conflicts, war, uh, injustice, or a success story as well. Within our limited intellectual capacities, of course, we are animals that have started to think a few um, thousand years ago that has allowed to actually enjoy the being in the planet, not just thinking in another life in the future or perhaps uh, in another dimension, but enjoy the life in this planet. I, I'm sure, of course, this history is a mix of both. But the awareness of our role uh, in changing the planet's ecology is... is, is uh, racing, but at a very slow pace, despite the fact that we are becoming more and more conscious together of the consequences and effects of adding all these local transformations at uh, our world. It is only within the last decades that uh, less than a century that we have learned that will pile the larger scales, they create an exponential risk to our own survival. With the Second World War, we started to fear about the globally fatal nuclear conflict, but since then, Ideas about risk and security are taking new shape and meanings, though. Resource availability, by example, is changing at high speeds, increasing uh, or changing vulnerability for some societies. But also we are changing the way we refer to those issues. We do not talk just about natural capital, but ecosystem assets and even gifts from the Mother Earth, uh, a recent and compelling narrative based on expansion or rights-based view. Um, there's many global assessments that are telling uh, this, this, this hard story, the IPBES, the IPCC, the FAO, the, all the organisms by the United Nations is, is helping us to understand what's happening at this global scale. But of course, we are envisioning different pathways, but we don't have one agreement. That's because there's no average nation. There's no, we, we don't uh, live in ecosystems cut by the limits of the different countries. So what we have to, uh, to do is to realize that we live in a, in a shared world, plenty of uh, diversity, ecological diversity and cultural diversity. So no single person, community or nation will be able to adapt isolated and much less to impose solutions to others to, for challenges of living in this, in this planet. Uh, we have uh, framed the, the idea of ecosystem services as uh, nature's contributions to people. And this has helped us to understand that we rely on a living planet where ecological processes allow us to thrive. But those processes, which mostly are based on microorganisms, uh, pollination, pest control, phosphor recycling, are becoming more and more uh, visible the, the last times. Uh, and they're quite important for global food and health security, for, for example. But we need to understand the interconnectedness of things. But, of, if not, we will witness a general collapse of, of, uh, of our society. Uh, but we have also to understand that we have alt altered the nature of those ecosystem services that ha we have to deal with new management options, combining different levels of control. To become stewards, we have to turn into ecosystem engineers, land artists, and bioethical thinkers at the same time for a general transition uh, to a just and sustainable future. Um, we need to understand that there are some 
uh, uh, options that we focusing will focus on reducing the speed of certain changes and monitoring systemic surprises. That's the consequence of, of living in, in, a, uh, in a world which is being impacted by many pieces, by changing many pieces uh, of the world at the same time. But others will emphasize innovation to face irreversibility. There are many things that are irreversible. We cannot go back in time. Mm -hmm. We cannot stop of, of our population. It's still growing. We are doing efforts to, to keep uh, and this is a number, but it's still a, a challenge. We cannot stop this this uh, growth. Also, we need to, to stop extinction uh, of the other living forms. That's an imperative. Uh, uh, let me insist, just uh, almost to finish, that this new planet we are living in is becoming wilder. Uh, but also our ways of thinking and confronting complexity are becoming more and more creative. We live longer, we have more resources, we are bolder as well as the, the planet needs us to be. So we have to, uh, we have come to understand turbulence uh, more, more and more. And in physics, it's quite important to understand the, the way oceans work, the way uh, climate works at this, this big machine, uh, metabolic machine, the dynamics of the largest forest and so on. But we are also running one of the most amazing experiments on Earth, which is the building of cities. Cities uh, nowadays are probably the, the most interesting ecological uh, experiment. And we are trying to see how much we can share with other species, how, how self-sustainable can we become in those cities. And sometimes we claim that cities are quite separated from nature, quote unquote. But the issue is that uh, this nature is, is Sometimes it's good to, to have this separation, like to live in a, a bubble for a little time because evolution works that way. You need to be isolated for a bit to understand, organize, and then uh, uh, create new options. I, I love speleology, by example, and caves are a good example for that. So uh, I think that uh, we are facing a lot of changes and uh, some of them will affect our own bodies, our own existence and organisms. Yeah, we are becoming cyborgs in some uh, way of, of telling. And perhaps this is a more, more, it's more an artistic quest than a planet intervention. Uh, COVID has taught us that science and good science uh, guided by love and care will help, us to, will help us to do that. So we need to deal with the ugly consequences of global change, but also in the beautiful capacities that we as humanity have built until now. Thank you very much. Fantastic, beautiful, well said, great talk, incredibly introspective. I love the, the idea that it's an artistic question as well, being an artist and having something to contribute. Um, so Adam and Klaus, I know, I know you have a bunch of stuff that you want to ask Brigitte, please <laughs> feel free to get started. Just lift a hand, who wants to start? Don't be shy. All right, Klaus. I see your hand first. We have seven minutes on the clock for our provocateurs. Klaus, go ahead. Yes, we have always more questions than answers. Uh, and uh, I am a physicist. And we see for our planet, uh, the future of our planet, Mother Earth, uh, that these two topics, climate change and biodiversity, they belong together. And very often it said, OK, the biodiversity, if you increase from 1.5, a degree to two degrees, there will be the, the disaster, there will be the big of changes. Um, but we have to speak about time constants also. We have big changes, and in physics, we know exactly uh, the long term changes. But you have now changes, the species disappear within 20 years. So mm. then the climate change is very important in the long run. And I, I think we should focus on climate change because there has so much impact. But then we have these additional uh, factors. Uh, we have uh, the agriculture, the land use. And uh, so there's so many different yeah, questions. Yeah. But uh, for the public, it's not important to focus on the most important things. For me as a physicist, the increase of the CO2 level in my life, it is increased by 40%. This is really a big distortion. So we are burning accumulated things from millions of years within 100 years. So this is one of the main problems. I think if we focus on this first, then we will solve also a lot of problems with uh, biodiversity. But biodiversity is much more complicated because you have evolution. We have a not 
the fixed system in physics, we can predict what happens in the future, uh, but the biosystem reacts, is living, yes, and yeah, we as class, physicists... I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think that's Please, beautiful. Uh, I think um, the, the question is, how do you um, reconcile with the time horizons and what should we be looking at? How should we be focusing on? What should we be focusing on first? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I agree that the, cl that the climate perhaps is, is a more s a simple way to, to deal with, with change because uh, we all live uh, and can uh, uh, understand a bit what, when it's rainy, when it's uh, excessively hot and humidity and, 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 and we are experiencing those changes and, and we are facing risks every day. We are having floods and fires and uh, storms and things and people is becoming scared and, and they're facing new risks. But also people is living in, 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 in tropical forests. We have ton, millions of people that uh, have a, a, a perception and love for the difference in variety. And they can handle that variety, perhaps not, not always uh, in the same direction than biologists and conservation biologists would, would like to, because it, it's too complex. But I think that we may face that together by thinking about transitions, transitions in agriculture, transitions in food production, transition in water production, and then link to climate change. But sometimes climate is not, especially for equatorial countries, we don't have seasons. Then if the if the seasons change very much or rain arrives later, we are ready for that. We live in a more chaotic system than in other latitudes. So perhaps that may help. Adam, I saw your hand go up. Uh, Ahmed, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Brigitte, that was a very nice talk. Um, so I'm also a physicist and I tend to be very, you know, literal and focused on a solution. And, uh, you know, I certainly understand that decades of trying to convince people to cut back um, you know, we're not hitting the targets we need to to be able to stop um, what's going on. You know, we I'm, I'm aware of the action we did put us in this situation. Why uh, not focus on efforts to undo those effects by direct action? And what I'm talking about is things like geoengineering, you know, solutions where we actively try to reverse the effect of what we're doing, putting sulfates in the atmosphere, things like that. What's your view of, you know, targeted geoengineering solutions? Yeah, I've heard something about that. I'm not an expert on, on, on those type of engineering projects, but I love them. I love science fiction as well. And we, I think that we need to do those experiments as well. We cannot uh, really uh, uh, avoid doing all the options or facing all the options. But for us, like in, in many, uh, developing countries, the best option is to uh, rebuild our resilience, rebuild the ecological capacities, rebuild the forest, and, and then at the same time, we build options for food security and for things that I mentioned before. But yes, I think we, we need to go on with some experiments and, and we'll face and we'll learn uh, how feasible are them or not. And there's plenty of technological innovation that is coming for, for that purpose. Can we yes. get a question Anne. in from Anne? Yeah. Yes, that was that was coming um, up next. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate yeah. that. Go ahead, yeah. Anne, please. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Bridget, for those uh, insights. Uh, my question really is: Do you think we can um, get to the? Do you think we can limit the global uh, rise in temperatures to way below two degrees Celsius by 2030? Or should we just focus our efforts on adaptation and maybe just forget about climate mitigation? Fantastic. Well, that depends on which country are you living in. I, I think we have different options. If you live in Europe or very well developed countries with industries and research capacities and uh, uh, investments in, in solutions, then you go for mitigation. And then, of course, it's also uh, an issue of global justice, environmental justice. Now, we, we are not, in, in many countries, we are not contributing too much to global warming. So, uh, in Colombia, perhaps as well in Kenya or in many other tropical countries, we we would prefer to go for adaptation, for adaptations, because we are very vulnerable. We, we don't have all that capacity. Our academies are small. Our budget for innovation and research is really, really small and, and, and small, and we have to, to use it very wisely. So uh, uh, here we are trying to, do, to go better uh, after adaptation, but that doesn't mean that we, uh, as a growing economically growing country need to, to focus a bit on, on the next generation of industries and energy production. So we are going for solar and wind energies and so on. But still, I, I and of course, being a biologist and an ecologist, I believe that rebuilding 
ecological capacities will also at least buy us some time. Okay. Perfect. We have eight seconds and Brigitte, if you yeah, can mention in, in eight seconds. Uh, I'm sorry, Klaus, we could be talking about this yeah. all day long because it's phenomenal, but yeah. that's why we break our rooms. <laughs> um, we are going to send you guys to these breakout rooms to continue this conversation. Fantastic, provoking, thought provoking questions, Brigitte. Fabulous as always. Thank you so very much for everything that you're saying. I have a million questions too, and I didn't get any in. And I'm very jealous of all you provocateurs to get to ask Brigitte questions. Uh, all right, so I'm sending you guys away. Thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day.